This is the Ansonia wall clock in the early 1900s. As you can see, it's got no glass or bezel. It's obviously been broken at some time and removed. And someone has painted a ghastly red line around the inside of the bezel there. We'll remove that when we polish up the bezel. We won't replace the glass and the top half of the bezel because it would be way too expensive to do that. But we'll clean that up. It's a single train clock, a timepiece and no striking mechanism. There's the key. And you'll see that the pendulum bob has not got a rating nut on it. So we'll have to get one of those before we finish. That's the clock label inside the clock. Okay, let's start to take it to pieces. First we'll move the hands using this specially modified pair of pliers I have. The groove cut in one side so the taper pin can slide through. We'll do that first. That'll get us started. Then we can pull the pin out using a pair of pliers. Put the pin aside. Remove the minute hand very carefully. And then a little bit of pressure under the hour hand and it pops straight off. As you can see the hands are a little bit rough. I'll just check their steel. Neodyme magnet sticks to it. It's steel. We'll clean them up and blue them before we put them back on again. First we'll remove the face so we can access the movement. We've got three screws to remove, one here, one there, and one there. So we'll do those. Once they come out, we'll put them in a, in a dish so we don't lose them. First one, now we can remove the face and see the movement inside. Now we will remove the movement. There's four screws. One there, one there, one there. The fourth one over here. Screw those. Put them aside. Two. Third one. And that's the fourth one. That's the movement there. We'll now take that to pieces. Check it to make sure it's working properly first. Then put it through the ultrasonic. Clean it reassemble it and oil it then we'll put it on a test stand to check and see how accurate it is we're going to put a mainspring clamp on the spring then we'll let it down so that the clamp takes all the pressure in the spring using a let down tool on top of the winding arbor we'll tighten it slowly then holding the click back we'll slowly let the let down tool turn around the mainspring clamp is getting tighter Last bit will let that down. That let all the tension in the spring is now contained in the mainspring clamp. Now we'll remove the crutch and the pallets by moving this arm here to the side and then lifting crutch off that post.
Now we'll remove the suspension spring, being very careful not to bend it. Out it comes. We'll take the crutch off. Using a 7mm spanner, we'll remove the nuts. There's four of them. Put them in a dish. Third one, the last one under the escape wheel. Now there may be a little bit of tension in the spring, but we're aware of that so we'll be careful when we lift the top plate. Very slowly, there, off the top. And off it comes. That's the escape wheel. That's the cannon arbor. That's the hour wheel on the bottom of it. That's the first wheel. Second wheel. Third wheel. And this is called the motion works. Cannon arm sits on top of that, like so. That's the minute arbor. The last gear we took out, that small gear on the top, is the one that drives the hour arbor it sits like that and the larger wheel that one drives a minute arbor right we'll clean the spring now we've got his scouring pad with some blue caro on it Double it over, turn on first to hold it in place. Double the scouring pad over on the spring, rub it backwards and forwards, the full length of the spring. Remove old grease and oil and dirt. It's on it over the years and it's accumulated. Pull it down as far as we can go. That's about as far as we're going to get on that, I think. Right, now using a piece of cloth, we'll wipe the caro off. Removing the dirt and the oil at the same time. Now with another piece of clean cloth, we'll go over the spring once again, 
and make sure that we've removed as much of the kero as we can. Wipe it down. Now we remove the spring from the winder. Put the winding arbor back in again. Actually that could do with a good clean. It's looking a bit rusty. We'll clean that before we put it back in. Right, we've set the winding arbor up in our lathe. We'll now turn the lathe on. Running at about 300 revs and using a 1200 grit stick. We'll slowly move that across the top of the arbor. And it'll remove the rust. I'll turn that up a little bit. It's better, it's about 500 revs now. Turn it off, see what we've got. Yes, that looks better. Right, we'll now grease our clean spring. Using some silicon grease, we wipe it around the inside of each of the loops of the spring, making sure that we get a liberal amount on. Any excess we'll wipe off when we're finished. That loop there. Around a bit more on the outside loop, down around there, and then in round a very tight bit, tightly well. Now back to the spring wind up, the spring on goes on that way. Right, we're ready to roll on the spring again. Wind it up so we can put the clamp on it. See how tight we're getting. The main spring clamp. Right now we can undo, reverse uh, the flow on the spring. And the main spring clamp will take up the tension. Excellent, there we go. Take that out. And there's our spring. You can see the excess grease on it, which we'll now wipe off. It's now ready to put back into the movement. We're now going to put the wheels back into the movement. We put the top plate on. We're going to check for end play and to see whether we need to do any re-pivoting. We'll put them in. They're there. Third wheel. There, now the escape wheel on the top plate. We'll start to put this all together. Now we can start to put the movement back together again. Line up, 
couple of the posts for a start. One's in, put a put a nut on that post there to hold it securely. Second wheel goes there. Third wheel little bit tight we'll open the plates a tiny bit to let it move put a nut on that post to hold it now move it round skate wheel it's the last wheel to go in tighten some nuts down the one on over there tighten them down just a little bit with a seven mil spanner hold everything in place see the trains moving smoothly now have a look to see what the pivots look like and check each wheel for in play we're looking at this pivot here at the moment The movement in that one. Fuck off out of it. That one there is have to be redone. Third wheel will have to be redone. Scope wheel. That one looks like it might be all right. Scope wheel there. Move that away. Yeah, most of them are going to have to be redone. We're going to start to rebush the plates now. We'll be working on this pinion here initially. And if you look, you can see how loose it is flopping up and down. Right, we'll take that to pieces. First thing we'll do is we'll mark the plate, the pen, so we know which pivot hole we're rebushing. Now we need to know what size the pivot is on this wheel. 1.63 mil. Jot that down, 1.63. Now we'll find out 
what size book we will need. Uh, we'll look on the outside of the box here. We're looking for diameter 1.63. We got 1.60, 1.65. We'll use the number 49 bush, 1.6 mil, number 49. And the diameter of the hole is 3.50 mil. We want a number 49, 49, that one there. Here we to make sure we get the right size bush, we'll put it in the palm of our hand. Take the wheel and make sure that the pinion doesn't fit in. It doesn't fit. So the pinion is larger than the bushing, so that's exactly what we want. Now we're going to set up our bushing tool. We'll start off by putting a post into the bushing tool. Like so. Then the next piece we put in is our center finding tool. This shows us the center of the bush in the plate. So move those out. Place the plate on top of the post and push the centering tool down. into the center, then we will tighten the jaws, and I don't think that will reach, not quite. Now we'll remove the, the center finding tool. We want this tool here, the 3.5 mil is, is the final size of the hole we'll be putting the bush in. But I've found that if you go down two sizes in reamers then you will be able to remove the material much easier so we'll start off with a 2.47 reamer tighten it down with the screwdriver then using a little bit of pressure, wind the handle, remove the excess brass, wind the handle, and the reamer cuts into the old bushing. Remove the 2.47. We've now got 2.97 reamer. that into the machine, tighten it down and turn the handle again that's done that change the reamer to 3.47 And tighten it down in the tool. Remove the reamer. We now get our bush, place it over the hole that we've just cut, making sure that the oil sink is down using a hammer. Tap it down once to make sure it's in the hole. Tap it with a hammer, release the plate, now we select the broaching tool, just fits inside the hole. Broaching tool is a five-sided cutting device tapered that is used for opening up 
bushes. So having selected the right size, we now put it into a pin vise, insert the brooch into the hole. Before we start rimming the hole out, you hold the pin vise down at the end here. You don't hold it up here. You hold it down at the end and you have to keep the brooch perpendicular 90 degrees that direction and that direction. They have to be 90 degrees all the way round. You can line it up as a terms of reference on one of these posts. And when you're ready, start spinning it slowly round a couple of turns at a time because it cuts very, very efficiently. Take the brooch out, put the wheel in, and it just fits in. All right. Now to check it properly, we'll put the top plate on, put the pivot into the hole, Align the posts, spin the wheel round. It's running nice and smoothly. You can see there is no movement there. I'll do the rest of the rebushing off camera and then I'll come back and we'll move on to the next part of the video. That's the wheel spinning in the pivot we've just replaced. Completed the bushings for all of these wheels. They're all in place now. You can see them spinning freely. They'll spin a bit more freely once we've oiled them. We've now finished the bushing, so we're ready to start the next part, which is putting the movement back together again. And you see the wheels are turning freely. They'll turn more freely once they're oiled. We're now ready for the next operation. I've cleaned the grease the spring and put it back into the bottom plate and now we're going to put the wheels into the movement. The first wheel first goes there. Second wheel third wheel Then we'll put the motion works in. And the cannon on top of that. And then this wheel in here. Actually, it'll go under. Goes on that wheel and that drives that. Now we'll put the top plate on. Sliding down. The escape wheel. Put a nut on it. It'll hold it, stop it moving. You can see what we've got. We can start putting the wheels into place. Everything seems to be pretty close. A 
Right, let's put the wheels in. First wheel. Second wheel. Third wheel. Spin round, see what we've got down here. Go over. We'll put a nut on this. Now we can work up the train again. Just a little bit tight. Now the escape wheel goes in there. Right, there we go. Tighten those down. Another nut on there. Tighten them down a little bit. See what we've got. Everything's spinning freely, so we'll go ahead and tighten those nuts down. Then we'll oil the movement. Maybe a Swiss-made clock oil. We'll oil each one of the pivots in turn. They're all sitting in new bushes, every one of these pivots. And a couple of drops of oil on the back of the winding arbor. Turn him over. Now we'll do this side. This is a fine oiler that I'm using. So I'm putting two dabs on each pivot. Or for the winding arbor. One for the click. Now we'll oil the escape wheel. Not picking up very much there. That 
that's looking better. But first we need to put a, a sealer coat over the timber. At the moment I'm getting the brush ready, our squirrel hair brush, ready for the job. I'm charging the brush with polish and removing the excess metho that the brush was stored in last night. Wipe the brush 13 or 14 times on the side of the pot to remove the excess. We'll start off with the front door, apply polish in the direction of the grain along the door, being careful not to apply too much polish or to get polish on the glass. Refill the brush and then carefully coat the side of the door along the glass making sure that no polish gets on the glass. With long careful strokes apply polish to the case making sure that you get right up into the corner and then draw the polish down again charge the brush again with more polish and then check that there are no runs in the work that you've already done. We'll now apply polish to seal up the front of the case using long broad brush strokes always in the direction of the grain. Charge the brush again and apply polish in each direction from each end to smooth it out. The movement has been fully assembled, oiled and checked and is now on a test stand. The clock in the lower right hand side is used to measure the accuracy of the Ansonia movement. This is a close up of the movement under test. Here we see the completed project hung up and running.